Today we're going to have a look at spying on North Korea with satellite. The things we can have a look at while using satellite are economic development, we can see disasters, troop movements, smuggling, uh, parades, military power and quite a lot of other things. Now if you look at the picture on the right side you can see two blobs and, and most people will not recognize it. But then if we add a little bit of shadow most people will realize what this is. These are some of the things we can do with satellite. Since most people don't have free access to satellite, I'm going to concentrate on open source satellite information. Here we can see the Nampo container port in 2018. And what we can see here is containers, nothing special. Well, considering that they of course have sanctions, and there shouldn't be that much. Now here we have a picture of uh, 2019 and we can see that there is actually a ship that is getting containers and we can see that many of the containers from the year before have moved and then we go a bit forward and then this is a picture from 2020 and all from Google. Now we can see that all the containers now are moved into one corner because they are building a new structure here. We can also see that there is an extra container crane here and that there are plenty of cranes here and here we have two more container cranes. To me that's an indication that obvious things are going quite well. You wouldn't extend your harbor if you wouldn't get lots of goods in. If you want to see more on uh, 38 North, a website that specializes in North Korea, you can actually find pictures of the same container port from the 3rd of April and the 10th of April, where you can see trucks moving containers and ships getting containers. I did write to them, but they didn't write back and I don't want to have a copyright claim against me, so I cannot show the pictures, but I will leave a link in the description. Here we have a picture of 2018 from the Nampo oil port. Now what you should look at is here is nothing. Here's an agricultural field and we have two tanks here and then we have a few tanks here two years later and we can see here's actually two storage units. This agricultural field has three very big storage units and here they are preparing to make new storage units. And again, this is an indication that obviously they get plenty of oil because you wouldn't make extra storage units if you didn't get enough oil. How does North Korea get its oil and what has that to do with, with satellite? I will try to explain this. But first we look at how much oil is coming in. Now on the left side here, we can see this much oil they are allowed to get. And this is probably what they get and the way it's done is that these two organizations that also made this image, uh, they simply use AIS which is automatic information system that each ship has and should have on and satellite images to count how many ships will visit the oil harbor. If you count the number of ships which you can see by satellite and then you estimate how big they are, or if you can find their name, then you know exactly how big they are. And then you can see how much oil is coming in. So it's very likely that the high number here is the real amount that comes in. And then we do have to consider that satellites do come over all the time, but they do not always catch everything because this is from the main ports, but many ships will meet with smaller ships and they will then bring it to small ports and that is then not counted. I'll try to explain how the oil comes in. You will have a, a port facility that delivers oil to a mother ship. A mother ship is usually a very, very big ship and they will then sell it to feeder vessels. And feeder vessels, they'll get the oil and bring it to, let's say, uh, fishing boats. They will typically sell it to fishing boats, so the fishing boats do not have to go back to the harbor. They can stay and, and keep on fishing. But they can also sell it to North Korean ships, and they will then directly deliver it to North Korea. The other way is that a ship would come and say, hey, uh, we are from the Seychelles, we are going to sell oil to 
Prussia, um, and then they buy it by a mothership, but they do not go to Russia. They will follow this yellow line. It's the AAS that is on, and then when they pass South Korea, they switch it off, swing into North Korea, deliver it, and then a few days later, they switch on the AIS again, the tracking system. Now, how does maritime tracking works? Like I said, all ships should have an uh, automatic information system. It's pretty much a little beacon that says, hello, I'm here, this is my name, this is my ship number, and in this way, you can always track ships, except that many uh, ships will switch them off. Now, this picture is uh, I, I took yesterday, and here we can see two ships by the Nampo port, the port I used uh, showed before. This is the Minhong, and we can see here that it is a North Korean ship. We don't know what's doing it in the port, but I can see it's there. Um, I don't have full uh, satellite access that cost a lot of money but if i would pay some money then i could get more access to direct updated data and if a group of citizens would say like hey we we start an organization we put some money together then it would be relatively easy to track all kind of things with satellite access because one simply can can pay for it we can also see another ship here it's just laying outside nampo and let's have a look at that. And that's the e-morning, uh, also a North Korean ship. We have no idea what it's doing there. And it might go into Nampo Harbor to deliver something. It could also go there to pick things up. I am not a ship specialist. So again, it's just speculation. But a ship wouldn't be laying outside the harbor if it wasn't going to do anything there. The last thing I want to have a look at is economic development. This is a picture of an area in North Korea from 2016. And this is the same area three years later. And as you can see, there is actually uh, either fish farming going on or they are going to reclaim this land. And since they reclaimed this one, I could imagine they're probably going to reclaim this land as well. We're almost by the end. And as you know, I like to keep my video short. But there is one thing I would like you to um, have a look at. There is something called Access DPRK. That is a website where you can download a file and that file combined with Google Earth will show you about a hundred thousand things in North Korea. And you can choose, you can take military stuff, economic stuff, etc., etc. If you use that, then you can see, oh, this is a coastal battery or Oh, this is a coal depot. And then you can go back in Google Earth and see, oh, hey, they're actually still working. The mine is getting bigger. Oh, the agricultural area is getting bigger. They are making new roads, etc., etc. So I will again leave a link in the description. It's definitely worth to have a look at it. <coughs> um, I it's always trying to keep my videos a bit short. If I had to explain all the satellite stuff, it would probably be a lecture of three hours. But please ask questions, and I'm more than willing to make another video and make it a little bit more clear. As always, thanks for watching.